Hello and welcome to HealthYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to talk about the properties of logarithms. So to review logarithms, logarithms are inverse functions of exponential functions. So what does this mean? Well, that means that if we have log base b of x equals y, this is the equi uh, equivalent of b to the y equals x. I guess that's not really what that means, but I figured I would just review what, the, what logarithms are. Um, what does it mean that they're inverses of each other? Well, you might remember uh, from a lesson on inverse functions that if you look at the composite function f of g of x or g of f of x, those would both equal x if they are in fact inverse functions. So if we were to look at, um, we'll say f of x equals e to the x and g of x equals log base, I'm sorry, I don't know why I chose E. Let's try that again, I'm gonna use B. I don't wanna do a specific example, I wanna do a generic example. And what we know is that B is greater than zero and B does not equal one, that's the, the, the thing here. So what this means, that they're inverses, is that if we did the composite function F of G of X, this would equal the composite function G of F of X, which would equal X. And just to verify that, F of G of X, that would be F of log base b of x and then I would take log base b of x and substitute it in anywhere seeing x and f which would give me b to the log base b of x and that's a little bit unusual but it is true that if we have a, a base raised to a logarithm of the same base the argument comes down as a normal thing as x. It'll be a little bit nicer to see when we do the other way around g of f of x so for g of f of x, that would be g of b to the x, and that would be log base b of b to the x. And this is something we're actually going to discuss here. Um, what do we do with this exponent? And it turns out we can uh, take the exponent and write it as a coefficient. So we get x times log base b of b. Log base b of b, this is an identity, and it equals 1, right? Because b to what power? gives us an, a, a value of b, well that would be b to the first, and then here we would end up with x. So we're going to discuss this property in this video, so don't worry about that, just to verify that they are in fact inverses of each other is a key thing. And then let's just talk about the parts of a logarithm. So when we have log base b of x equals y, b is called the base, x is called the argument, and y is called the exponent. And actually in all of these examples, we're not gonna have equations, we're just gonna have just the single logarithm log base b of x. So what's important to know is that b is the base, so the subscript is the base, and then the argument is the thing that we're looking at the logarithm of. Okay, so the properties of logarithms, we need to make a few assumptions. For the, each of the properties, we're gonna assume that x, y, and b are all positive real numbers, and b does not equal one. Our first property is this same base multiplication property. This says if two logarithms have the same base and are being added, we can combine them into one logarithm by multiplying the arguments. So if we have log base b of x plus log, ba log base b of y, we can combine this into a single logarithm, so log base b, and then we can multiply the two arguments, x times y. And that looks a little strange, but actually this is somewhat similar to the same base multiplication property of exponents. So if you recall what that is, that's if we have b to the x times b to the y, we could write it as a single base b to the x plus y. And that's basically what we're looking at. And just to, to do a concrete example, because I know these can be weird, let's do log base 2 of 4 plus log base 2 of 8. This should equal, based on this property, log base two of four times eight. Well, log base two of four, so two to what power is four? That's two. And log base eight, two to what power is eight? That's three, so two plus three is five. Over here, if we simplify four times eight, we would get 32. And which power of two is 32? It is the fifth. So we can see here that the same base, pro uh, same base multiplication property does in fact hold up. And I know it's a little weird, but if you look at what we're talking about with each of these, we're talking about the exponents. So it's like the reverse of 
you know, the, the same base property of multiplication for exponents, which makes sense since this is the inverse function of those. Okay, so we want to remember this. If we have the same base, we can multiply the arguments if the two expressions are being added. The next property is the same base division property. If two logarithms of the same base are being subtracted, I'm going to cut the rest of those letters, are being subtracted, we can write them as a single logarithm by dividing the first argument by the second argument. So this should be the word r. I don't know what happened there. Okay, if two logarithms of the same base are being subtracted, we can write them as a single logarithm by dividing the first argument by the second argument. So what's this one saying? We have log base b of x minus log base b of y. We could write this as a single logarithm, log base b, with an argument x divided by y. So same base division. Notice when it says same base, it's like literally referring to the little base right there, that subscript. Okay, um, so we want to know this. Notice that when we write it as a single logarithm, I only write log base b once. The only thing that becomes a fraction is the arguments. Very frequently, I see students who write log base b of x over log base b of y, and that is not the same thing. Not the same. So make sure when you're doing this, you're writing just one single base. Let's look at an example to make sure we agree with this. If we have log base 2 of 8 minus log base 2 of 4, based on this property, that should be log base 2 of 8 divided by 4. Notice that the order does matter here. The, anything that comes after a subtraction that's like having a negative coefficient, anything with a negative coefficient will be in the denominator. Okay, so here, 2 to what power is 8? That's 3 minus, this is 2, so we end up with 1. Over here, we have log base 2 of 8 divided by 4 is 2, and log base 2 of 2 is 1, so lo and behold, it works. And again, if we think about what this is, this is talking about, like, the exponents of 2. So it, it hopefully makes sense. Okay, so what we want to know, we, when we have the same base, and the two arguments or the two expressions are being subtracted, we can write as a single argument of division. The third property is a really strange one. If an argument has an exponent, so the argument has an exponent, the expression can be rewritten by moving the exponent to the coefficient of that term, and then it would no longer be the exponent because you just moved it. So what this is saying, if we have log base b of x to the y, this is the same thing as y times log base b of x. That's kind of a crazy one. Log base b of x to the y is the same thing as y times log base b of x. So what does this give us? Um, or let, let's look at an example of this because this one I know is weird. Let's say log base 2 of 4 to the third. And we want to verify that this is the same thing. Is this going to work? I hope so. It better because otherwise this property is no good. 2, 4. Okay. So if we look at this, uh, 4 cubed is 64, so this would be log base 2 of 64, and 2 to what power is 64? That would be 2 to the 6th. Over here we have 3 times, this is log base 2 of 4, so 2 to what power is 4? That's 2, and 3 times 2 is 6. And look at that, this property holds. So this is a good one to know, if an argument has an exponent, it becomes a coefficient of that logarithm. All right, so in our first few examples, we're going to expand each expression as much as humanly possible using the three properties just discussed. And when I say expand, that means that each argument is one single factor with an exponent of one. So we don't have to worry about exponents here because we don't have exponents. In, well, two and I have exponents of one, so we're, we're all set there. But we have two factors. I have a factor of two here and a factor of a. So we're going to split this up. Because they're being multiplied, this would be same base multiplication. So we're actually starting with the right-hand side. We have the right-hand side. We're going to rewrite it as the left-hand side as two separate logarithms. So this would become log base 3 of 2 plus log base 3 of a. And that's how we can expand a single logarithm and make it more complicated. Okay, in the next example, we have log base a and the argument is 6 divided by m. So this time we're looking at the same base division property. And again, we're starting on this side. So this is what we have. We can rewrite it as two separate logarithms using subtraction. 
So this would be log base A, and the six has to come first because it's the thing that's, uh, it's the dividend. So it comes first, minus log base A of the divisor M. And this would be the expansion of log base A of six over M. In this example, we have log base seven of Y to the fourth. So in this case, we only need one logarithm because there's only technically one factor. Well, but there's not, there's actually four of that single factor. But remember what we can do, we can take the exponent, this is power to a power, and write it as the coefficient, so this would become four times log base seven of y. One more example, uh, we have log base five of c times d over e. So here we have same base multiplication in the numerator, so everything's gonna be positive, so we can split this up um, by saying log base five of c plus log base five of d, and then how do we say, wait, this is all divided by something? We would subtract that one, minus log base five of e. Before we look at the other direction, I do wanna point out um, something that can be a little bit tricky, which is if we have two factors in the denominator. So if we had log base five, I'll use new variables, we'll do um, j times k over m, just kidding, that's, <laughs> that's not what I want to do. How about j over k times m? There we go. Now I have two factors in the denominator. When we write this, we just want to be careful. Um, so since the j is like in the numerator, we could just say log base 5 of j. But because both k and m are in the denominator, it's tempting to want to say that we're using addition. But really, we want to break this up by considering they're both in the denominators, so they both need to be subtracted. They both need to have a negative uh, coefficient because that would indicate a negative exponent, which is how they would get in the denominator in the first place. So we could write this as log base five of K minus log base five of M. If you wanna say, no, it's same base multiplication, it should be addition, that's fine, but then you would have to put it inside parentheses um, and then you could distribute that subtraction sign. If this is still, a little, and I, I would not write it like this, I would, my final answer should not be that. I don't know why there's a mark there. Log base five minus log. Um, if, if you don't like this, just consider rewriting this uh, argument, j over km, so that there is no fraction anymore. That would be the same as log base five. And to pull up the k from the denominator, we would need to raise it to the negative one. To pull up m from the denominator, we would need to raise it to the negative one. Then if we were to split up these three things, we would have log base five of j plus log base five of k to the negative one plus log base five of m to the negative one. But then we have a problem because we should only have an exponent of one and both k and m have exponents of negative one. So you would take the exponent and you would pull it out in front and that's gonna get you back to this subtraction that's here. So we just wanna be careful just want to caution against that if there are two factors in the denominator, they should both come after subtraction signs because of the fact that that meant there was a reciprocal taken. All right, now we're going to go the other direction. We're going to write as a single logarithm. Notice it says single logarithm. So the final answer should have how many logarithms? Did I hear a one? Because I should have, because that's what single means. Okay, what is our single logarithm here? So we have to have the same base, which we do. Yeah, if we don't have the same base, you can't write it as a single logarithm, and that would just be cruel and unusual, but we do, so that's good. And if we're going to combine these, they're being added, that would mean same base multiplication, so it would become log base 2 of a times b. Oh, here we go. Here's our double subtraction. So what does this mean? If we're going to rewrite this, we have the natural log of x minus the natural log of y minus the natural log of z. This would be ln, and then what's going to be in the numerator is just the x. Both y and z want to be denominators because they both come after these subtractions. So we have the natural log of x over y times z. And then our final example, we have two times, I think it's our final, yeah it is, two times log base five of m. This is a single logarithm, but notice it says of the form, notice that here there's a coefficient of one. So how do we get two and not make it a coefficient? Remember what it does, it goes back to being an exponent. So this would be log base five of m squared. This has been a video of the properties of logarithms. Thank you for stopping by.